Hi, my name is Valerie and I'm from Seattle. Growing up, I lived on the penthouse floor of the fanciest hotel in the city with the weirdest parents on the planet. My parents owned the hotel and about a dozen more around the world. They were millionaires and everyone in town loved them. They'd wave and smile to the doorman and the guests as they walked into the hotel, but the moment we arrived in our penthouse, everything changed. They'd send me to my room and spend the rest of the night shouting into their cell phones. When I was five, I asked my dad to read me a bedtime story. As usual, he was busy on the phone. Please, Daddy, it'll only take a second. I asked him again, and he snatched the book out of my hand and threw it out the window. Here's your story. Don't interrupt Daddy when he's on the phone. The end. Now go to your room. When I was 14, my history teacher, Miss Jackson, gave me an assignment to draw my family tree. I asked my mom and dad about it, and their faces turned white. We are your only family. That's all you need to know. What about grandparents or cousins? Do we have any pictures? I could use them for my project. The next day, my teacher was gone. She'd been reassigned to a new school. I was so upset. I knew my parents had something to do with it. When I came home, I confronted them about it, but they swore they didn't do anything. I could tell they were lying. Things at school weren't much better. I was shy and a teeny bit clumsy. And one day in the cafeteria, I tripped over my shoelace and spilled my lunch all over the most popular girl in school. Sorry, she and her minions made it their mission to make my life miserable. Hey, leave me alone or I'll... What, you'll tell your rich daddy and get us transferred like you did to Miss Jackson? After that, none of the kids in school wanted anything to do with me. My only friend in the world was the doorman's son, Peter. Why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know because the sun was in his eyes. <laughs> Peter always found a way to make me smile. And on days when my parents were away on business, I'd sneak down to the lobby to hang out with Peter. We played chess, he helped me with my algebra homework, and even taught me how to play the harmonica. When I turned 16, things got even worse. My parents spent most of their time away on business, and Peter's dad wasn't working as much as he did before. So I spent most of my days alone in the penthouse. One day, I was wandering around the apartment looking for my calculator. I couldn't find mine, so I went to my parents' office to use theirs, and I saw a painting hanging lopsided on the wall. I walked over and adjusted the picture, and then I heard a clicking sound. What's that? The wall behind the painting wasn't a wall at all. It was a hidden door. I pulled it open and found a huge safe I'd never seen before. The safe had a combination lock. I tried a few numbers, but none of them worked. I started to walk away. This was my parents' secret safe. I wasn't supposed to be in here, but I couldn't resist. My parents were never good at remembering things, so they had to have written the code down somewhere. I searched through my parents' drawers and notebooks looking for clues, and then I found it. Stashed away in a secret compartment in my dad's drawer was a list of passwords and the code to the secret safe. I typed in the code and the safe opened. Inside were a bunch of boring old documents and a photo album I'd never seen before. I opened the photo album and saw an old picture of my parents. They were much younger and didn't have any of their fancy clothes and flashy jewelry. They stood in front of a tiny old shack with a baby in their arms, but it wasn't me. Next to the photo was a birth certificate. I had a sister named Reina who was 16 years older than me. I was furious. My parents had lied to me my whole life. On the next few pages were letters from Raina begging my parents to come see her. Raina had a family of her own and wanted to meet me and reconnect with my parents. My fury turned to confusion. Why would my parents hide Raina from me? Why would they shut their own daughter out of their life? I needed answers, and I knew my parents would never give them to me. They'd only lie, or worse. My despicable parents might send Raina and her family away, and I'd never see them again. Reina's address was printed on one of the letters, and she only lived a few hours away. I could take the train and get there by morning. Without thinking, I packed a bag, grabbed some cash from the safe, and hopped on the train. A few hours later, I was on Reina's doorstep. Reina lived in a run-down apartment building. I knocked on her door. The door opened, and I gasped. It was like I was staring at my future self. Aside from her green eyes, we looked exactly alike. Valerie? Reina? Reina hugged me tight, and then a five-year-old girl ran up and grabbed my leg. This is your niece, Amanda. 
Reina invited me inside. She explained that she'd left my parents' house when she was in the 11th grade. The last time I saw you, you were so small. You knew about me? Of course. I used to sing you to sleep when you were a baby. I left the house a few weeks before your first birthday. Leaving you behind was my biggest regret. I'm sorry, I don't remember you. It's not your fault. I know, it's our terrible parents. They're not terrible, they're just set in their ways. Controlling and overprotective one moment and never around when you need them. I know what you mean. I had to leave so I could breathe and be my own person. But now, I want them to meet Amanda. I want us to be a family. Maybe I can help with that. I can't ask you to do that. You don't have to. Our family is broken and I'm gonna fix it. Reyna drove me back to the train station. On the bus, I started nodding off, and then several of the passengers' phones started beeping and buzzing, and then everyone started staring at me. I glanced at the notification on my phone and saw that I'd been reported missing, and I was all over the news. The moment I got off the bus, a couple of policemen escorted me to their car and drove me back to the hotel. Where have you been? We've been worried sick. I went to see Reyna. Reyna, how on earth did you- I saw the photo in the safe. I read the letters. Reyna told me how you refused to see her and her daughter. That's not the whole story. Spare me your lies. You've never told me a single truth since I was a kid, and that stops today. Your granddaughter Amanda wants to meet you. You've got a second chance to make things right with our family. I invited Amanda and Reyna over for dinner tomorrow. Hopefully you'll have the decency to be there. Then I stormed off to my room. I heard my parents whispering late into the night. The next morning, they were the nicest they'd been since I could remember. They pulled out all the stops as they prepared for Reyna and Amanda's arrival. They brought in the finest chef in the city and bought Amanda a ton of gifts. When Reyna and Amanda arrived, my parents were on their best behavior. We sat around the dinner table eating and smiling. And for the first time, it felt like I had a real family. Reyna and Amanda moved into the penthouse next door. Reyna even took a special interest in my parents' company. My dad offered her a job working beside him, and I got to watch Amanda after school. I read Amanda's stories, took her to the zoo, and taught her to play chess. Amanda and I did everything I'd never had the chance to do with my parents when I was her age. Things were going better than I ever could have imagined. We were all so happy, but a few weeks later, Reyna started staying out late. At first, it was one or two nights a week, and she'd drop Amanda off to stay with us. But two nights a week turned into four, and eventually, Reyna started staying out for days at a time. She even stopped showing up at work. One night, I was reading a bedtime story to Amanda, and she was pretty upset. Where's my mommy? I don't know, sweetie. She'll be back soon. But you said that two days ago. I didn't know what to do. Each time I called to check on Reyna, she didn't answer her phone. My parents weren't much help either. Every time I tried to talk to them about Reyna, they'd just change the subject and rush off to their room. What's going on with you? Amanda has been worried sick. <sighs> when did you turn into mom and dad? I thought you were cool. Then she grabbed Amanda's hand and stormed out the door. I was so confused. I wasn't trying to control Reyna like our parents. I just wanted her to be more responsible when it came to Amanda. A few days later, my parents hosted their annual gala at the hotel for millionaires and celebrities from around the world. The featured event was the charity auction where fine art and jewelry were auctioned off to raise millions for people in need. Reyna was supposed to help with the auction, but as usual, she was a no-show, so I had to take her place. She was supposed to do a final check of the items up for auction to ensure that everything was labeled correctly. I was halfway through my checklist when I heard glass shatter. I turned to see three people in masks rushing through the glass doors. I hid behind a large statue as the masked robbers snatched jewels off the counters and stuffed them into their bags. I hit the silent alarm and then the police burst in. The robbers fled. The police caught two of them, but one of them headed my way. Just as the robber was about to slip out the back door, I jumped up and tackled him to the ground. I pulled off his mask and saw that it wasn't a man at all. It was my sister, Reyna. I was speechless. Reyna was arrested and taken to jail. When the police searched Reyna's hotel room, they found that she was the ringleader and she'd been planning the heist for weeks. I was sick to my stomach for days. I didn't understand how Reyna could do such a thing. And with Reyna in jail, 
Amanda wouldn't have a mother. Our family was broken before, but now we were shattered to pieces. I destroyed our family. You can't blame yourself for this. I'm the reason Reyna's in jail. If I hadn't found her and brought her here, then maybe none of this would have happened. Reyna has always had problems. She's been in and out of trouble since she was a teenager. Lying, stealing, hanging out with the wrong crowd. We tried to help her when she was in high school, but she ran away. She lied about not wanting us to stay in touch with her. Our home was always open to her, but she refused to see us. We even sent her money to make sure she and Amanda were okay. Why didn't you ever tell me any of this? Reyna made it clear that she wanted nothing to do with this family. We knew how much you always wanted a big sister or a big brother. We knew if we told you the truth that you wouldn't understand. It would only hurt you. We're sorry we lied. We didn't know how else to protect you. When Reyna came to live with us, we hoped that she'd changed for Amanda's sake. But instead, she fell into her manipulative ways. We're so sorry that she hurt you. I apologized to my parents and eventually forgave them for lying to me. My parents adopted Amanda and raised her as their own. They even stopped working so much so they could spend more time with me and Amanda. Our new little family wasn't perfect, but we loved and supported each other through everything. Every day, I wrote Raina letters to tell her that I loved her and missed her. After I graduated from college, I opened a counseling center for young women. And one night, when I was closing up for the evening, Raina walked in the door. I'm sorry, Valerie. I was a horrible sister, a crappy mother, and a terrible daughter. That may be true, but you're family and you're here. That's all that matters. <laughs> then I hugged my sister and she cried in my arms.